All right, guys, while these few pictures are going by of what the boat looked like when I bought it, just a quick disclaimer. I am not a professional carpenter, so I know people might tear me up in the comments about this or that, but disclaimer, I am not a professional carpenter of any kind. I mean, I have light carpentry skills, but I'm not a professional. So go ahead, eat me alive about that stuff if you want, whatever. I wasn't sure I was even going to make this into a video, so I didn't quite keep up with the filming and pictures probably like I should have. But now that I'm thinking about it, I got enough material I can throw something together just to uh, give you guys an idea of the project and what I did. I bought this boat for $500 that was trolling motor, gas motor, the boat, the trailer, title, everything included. And I only put a couple hundred bucks into it. So this is what I ended up doing. We'll go through it. I got a couple videos. I got pictures. I'll try to narrate throughout what's going on. I'll try my best to explain what's going on and uh, enjoy the video. I hope you like it. All right, so here I'm just showing some of the damage to the boat and uh, what the seats look like and trying to explain that uh, some idiot put glue all over this carpet, all over the seats, all over the, the floors of the boat. Pretty much the entire thing was like that. There's a little leak right there, you know, where you can see the dark spot. Something I ended up taking care of with JB Weld. Up there, I was just explaining I'm going to be putting a casting deck and um, just pretty much complaining more about the uh, all that glue, man. I had a, a hell of a time getting that glue off. I mean, it, it was terrible. I, I would never recommend anybody to ever put that amount of glue down if you're just gluing carpet down. I would just leave bare aluminum before I did that because if somebody ever, you know, gets hold of the boat and is trying to redo it like this, it's a extremely bad headache. Right here you can see they actually took out one of those bench seats. So uh, I was talking about that. The audio in that's terrible, so I'm just going to try to like narrate over it. They had taken out one of the bench seats and it kind of made the boat um, a little flimsier than it should be. And as you can see, all these seats were cracked and broken. so. Right here, I'm just talking about having to replace those and, you know, giving a little tour of what the boat looks like at that point. I ended up redoing everything, the entire transom and, and everything inside and out, both sides of it. So I don't really get to show you that in any of the pictures or videos. Like I said, I was slacking on that. I apologize. But, yep, here's an overall look of what it looked like when I started tearing it apart. So here's just a couple pictures as I was taking the seats out and uh, cleaning up all the debris that was underneath of everything. Um, I was just trying to clean her up and see what I was dealing with. Sorry about the orientation of this video. That's just the way I recorded it. Just showing off, uh, you know, what she was starting to look like as I was cleaning her up, scraping all that uh, glue off of there. Which, uh, side note, I actually didn't get all of the glue off. It was almost impossible. I used everything I could uh, goof off. I scraped at it. I, uh, I used wire brushes. I did everything I could. It just would not all come off. So I ended up having to uh, do something else. I'll, I'll talk about that later. But uh, this was just temporary seats and stuff. This is temporary what it was going to look like so I could get it out on the water and check all the rivets. These are just pictures from that process of me uh, putting the bench seats in so I could go check those rivets like I was saying um, and what it was going to look like just so I could get it out there and, and fish it for a little bit and check it like I said. This is pictures of the uh, rivets on the bottom of the boat and um, just how I sanded lightly around those and then... Um, JB welded all the rivets. You can see I JB welded along the entire seam of the boat, both sides here. And this was just uh, in preparation to get ready to sand it and give the bottom of the boat a paint job. This was also one of the longer and more painful processes of this whole ordeal. Sanding it took quite a while. It was really messy. And uh, the weather didn't always participate while I was trying to get that done. So it took me a little longer than I wanted it to. 
to get the entire boat prepped and ready to be painted. But, um, I went ahead and just sanded the entire boat down. Then I took, um, mineral spirits and wiped all of the dirt and dust off and just cleaned around, you know, the seams and the rivets and tried to get all that extra dirt and dust out of there so that, you know, the paint could stick to the bottom of the boat better, you know, because that's what the directions told me to do. <laughs> I'm not a painter either, so I was just uh, going with the flow and doing what I could. Here's um, a real quick video of the bottom completely sanded, and I got uh, the edges taped off where where I plan on painting the rest of the boat a different color. I used this uh, Rust-Oleum two-time ultra coverage with the uh, paint and primer in one uh, to try to minimize how many coats I had to put on it. I think I ended up putting three coats on it anyway just because I had the paint to do it. So it actually worked out really well. It covered pretty nicely for uh, just one coat here. If you take a look, you can actually see the new transom I put on it there. Not very long, but you can see it. Uh, so this is only one coat. I ended up painting one or two more coats on it. I didn't record uh, myself doing that, though. So I still had to take the uh, stickers and all that off of it and replace all that, too. Here's just a couple extra pictures I had of the bottom after I finished it. And then um, this here is the color I went with for the rest of the boat. And it was called Italian Satin Olive. I believe, which uh, right there you can see that new transom too that I never took any video of, but uh, I really like the color. It turned out really good. This here is actually only one coat also. I didn't film myself sanding the sides down and everything like I did with the bottom of the boat, but it was the same process. I sanded it all down and uh, taped everything off, put a coat on there. I didn't film myself doing the other coats of this paint either, but this still gives you an idea of, of what I was doing there. More random pictures after I was done painting it. This is with two coats on both sides. So this was the paint job the boat was getting before I flipped it over and got to working on the inside. Um, right here I'm actually taking a picture to make sure I put the wires in their correct place, which they're color coded. but. I forget why I had to take a picture. I originally planned on just changing this uh, trailer wiring harness right here, but it ended up actually needing completely rewired the whole trailer because uh, none of the lights would work. The wire was just really old and brittle. Everything was breaking as I was trying to fix it. So I actually ended up having to replace the wire all the way down through. That ended up being a little bit of a pain in the neck, but uh, which also, if you see that trailer jack right there too, that was new. I put that on and uh, bolted everything back together nice and tight because everything was loose, and that trailer jack actually wasn't there. Here, this is my son Blaze. I actually uh, featured him in another video where we went and uh, snuck into a pond. We didn't really sneak in. Uh, it's, the place is shut down. But anyways, I had him help me. Um, we got the fiberglass uh, wire runners, I guess you would call them. I don't know. I'm sure that there's a, a particular name for them that an electrician would use. But we needed those because there was like a little, like almost like a little pipe that you had to run these wires through all the way down the length of the trailer. So tried to get my son involved and uh, teach him a little something, show him, you know, how to get that done and just getting him involved, you know. He actually, he did a really good job. He helped me wire this whole thing, so it worked out. But we're going to end the video there and uh, keep it around 10 minutes. That way the YouTube algorithm might throw it in there somewhere. But uh, in the next video, we'll finish everything up and uh, I'll show you the final product and what we ended up with. Thanks for watching.